Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and it's today on the Rock Metal Podcast, we have Ven Tenor. They have a new EP called Parasite, which released on August 20th via Syndicall Music. Right now, I'm being joined by Charlie to share some more information about this stellar release, Why the Bleeding is Happening Vertical. Hello. Thank you for having me back again. I, I feel like I've been here more than anywhere else, to be honest with you, so I'm very welcome like to, to be here. It's, it's always good fun. Yeah. It's a good chat. Good chat indeed. Well, you know, I figured, Samantha, I woke up this morning and Samantha's like, hey, you're talking to Charlie first. And I was like, woohoo. So I clicked my heels and then I went, <laughs> <laughs> I went outside for a, for a brisk moment because you guys are having a bloody heat wave, but here in Canada, we're having frost and we're getting ready for the, the epic moment that everybody knows Canada for, which is winter. When does that start like over there? Cause that seems to be like a longer affair than most places. Yes. And that also depends where you're at in Canada, where I'm at in Canada, in the middle of nowhere, that typically starts around October, like late September into early October, and that can go all the way into April slash May, give or take even June. We've even had snow in July. So that's savage. Yeah. Whereas like Vancouver, they never get winter. And if they do get snow, they're like, what do we do? And we have to send them equipment, uh, and then you get into Eastern Canada or like real Canada, like Toronto and Montreal, like where real Canada is. And they have like a proper seasonal change. So their winter starts in like November or December and goes until like February or March. And then they're done with it. Last time I spoke to you was just after the last album. And it would have been like December, I think maybe 2020 or like maybe. Yeah, I think it was like November or December 2020. Yeah. And I remember you saying it was like minus 20 and it was silly cold. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, my sympathies. Well, thank you. Do you need me to send you, do you need me to send you socks or anything or like good blanky? Yes. Good British socks and blanky will help defend against any Canadian winter, which is what we learned <laughs> from our, our uh, Thanksgiving stories here that when the pilgrims yeah, came yeah, over, yeah, yeah. when the pilgrims yeah. came over, they, they were, they taught, the natives how to handle the winter that's with their socks and their yeah, blankies exactly. that's, that's yeah that's what colonialists do right i mean they, they tell the locals how to do it better like yeah um <laughs> this got dark fast uh yeah. cool well, we better talk about neon then because that's bright it is mm-hmm. and then if you go into northern canada then you end up getting the same effect that you would get in the arctic because it is the arctic so right now the sun's not going down at all and then in the winter time the sun will never come up and that, I, I mean yeah that's that there's a lot of things you'd have to just not do seasonally, which would frustrate me a lot. Like, yeah, I've met people who've grown up there because they do have uh, cities, I guess. And anybody who's listening in like Northwest Territories is like offended now, but they're probably not. Uh, or like the Yukon. They're like, tourism, come visit us. What do I do there? Um, you know, but did you ever see the um, did you ever see the, the White Stripes tour video under Great Northern Lights? No. It's really good, uh, but it was just him and Meg White, and they went on a tour of like really obscure little like Inuit villages and in, like Northern Territory parts of Canada, and to the middle of just fucking nowhere, and then played songs for like you know little uh, Inuit communities that just hadn't probably ever seen any like you know American bands come through there ever. Yeah, um, and yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, ate local food and checked out the snow and stuff. Yeah, seal, seal, yeah, whale, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's got a got to be freshly killed it's got to be warm when you're eating it uh i mean i've never killed a whale uh so well i'm talking about seals i don't know about whales oh right. I, don't, I don't know that in the middle of that well i guess maybe i don't know i'll be fair i i'm pretty typical white canadian dude i don't know much about what goes on up there other than stereotypes i have had that conversation though with uh an indigenous friend who's from northwest territories who moved down and uh yeah he said he wasn't too terribly surprised but I didn't really know much. I mean, that is kind of the way, though. I mean, most people in England haven't been to Stonehenge. You know, pretty much everywhere I go in the world, I'm like, oh, have you been to see the thing? Like, no. I'm like, you lived there for 50 years. Have you not seen the thing? But yeah, it's just kind of the way, isn't it? You know? mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. Okay. I mean, we neither of us live in China, and we both study Chinese martial arts. Very true. Yeah. I feel like I've got connections in Chinatown now. <laughs> You've got some clout. like. <laughs> <laughs> so... True story. Today, as of recording this, September 18th, I was supposed to do a Kung Fu demo at West Edmonton Mall, which is, it, it, it kind of varies. The same people own Mall of America, which is the largest mall in America, and then West Edmonton Mall, which is the largest mall in Canada. And each year, there's a top up between which one is the largest one in North America total. It's a big freaking mall. 
And anyway, they're doing a Kung Fu demo and they're like, you know what? It'll probably be okay. But our premier decided on July 1st on Canada Day that the pandemic was over. So now we're like really in the shitter, like really in the shitter. Like they they were closing down hospitals. People are being sent home. If you have cancer, they're like, just die out behind the dumpster quietly, please. <laughs> Um, they've even closed down the kids hospitals, which I had to take a moment for. I'm probably going to take a moment after I say that now, because like, yeah, that is brutal, man. Like, wow. Yeah. Once the kids can't get, you know, their treatments, that's, that's too far. Uh, yeah. you know, so we've declared uh, an emergency so that the conservative government can ask the liberal government for help that they're then going to say was their fault the whole time anyway. Bup, 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 bup. Um, yeah, but the conservative government's now gone, gone into hiding, which is cool. So we have a federal election going on right now, and the federal leader's gone into hiding after this. <laughs> the premier's gone into hiding after this. I'm like, ah, oh, good to see you guys screwed yourselves out of an election just by being yourselves. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. So it got canceled, the event. And then there was a point where my Sifu was like, well, did you want to do Chinatown too? And I'm like, well, hold on a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is how movies start. Some white guy comes into Chinatown. It's true. <laughs> thinking he can do something. This, this, I, yeah. I don't know. He's like, all right, you know what? You'll do a weapons form, a hand form at West Edmonds and Mall. So I was going to do Gung Lukin, And then uh, I'm going to do a Billy Club uh, weapons form, potentially on a Chinese New Year in February. But that's really up for grabs because who knows what's going to be happening here in February. And I'm also probably going to be in the middle of moving into my house around that time. Cool. Yeah. Great. We're leaving London as well, actually. I know you mentioned that like two years ago. You're going to Vancouver and then the pandemic happened. Yeah. So now we are moving to Cornwall in the southwest tip of England. Okay. Um, in a... like 11 months. Wow. So, yeah. Um, moving to coastal country life um, for a while. Yeah, you could resurrect the whole language and, and culture and everything. It's, do you know what? Cornwall's really like, they're really strong on their stuff. Like they have like loads of uh, the sort of the traditional kind of Cornish language signs down there. And they're still really like connected like to that old past of, you know, traditions and witchcraft and all that kind of stuff down there. It's really cool. It's a really cool part of the world. Yeah. And they're they're okay with you being there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I asked a few people. They seem fine. Okay. Um, but like... Excuse no me, sir. Ring, like, hello, Cornwall. Can yeah. I come? Like, yeah. Just... <laughs> I won't bring a flag this time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, or my muskets. So yeah, uh, so yeah we're going to be country country folk soon, which will be fun. Yeah, you might even get a bit of twang to your accent. That's cool. Maybe everyone thinks I'm Australian already, anyway, which is really weird. I don't think I sound Australian, but a lot of people do. Well, you got a lot of tattoos. You wake up early in the morning. You do yoga. I can see some parallels. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, my beer consumption is a lot lower than the average Australian, from what I've seen. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, I, I can't surf, terrible at swimming, um, not good with spiders. You know, a lot of the things that Australians are kind of used to. Um, Very true. But yeah. We should probably, at some point, talk about some music at some point, maybe. Like, we've just got, a thought. Like, We've got 15 minutes left. We should probably stop <laughs> broadcasting our get-togethers and just have get-togethers. <laughs> Do they yeah. have, do they have internet in Cornwall? I don't know. Tell me about the. Actually, they have the fastest internet in the country because all the transatlantic land lines like land right there. Um, so the internet there is like super fast. All right. Yeah, I'll send you some. I'll send you some pictures after this, and you can see because uh, it's quite incredible. Like it doesn't look like England. It's quite impressive. Well, no, it's Cornwall. Well, it's still England, but it just looks doesn't look like it. It looks like some sort of like beautiful coastal place that's wonderful. Um, but yeah. Mm hmm. Exactly. You ever see the Family Guy episode where they talked about uh, Ireland before somebody invented whiskey? Yes, I did. Yeah, yes. so I was going to crack that joke. They're like, well, yeah, it's probably like Ireland before somebody invented whiskey. So it's like a futuristic society with the fastest internet in the country. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very quiet. There's, I think there's like half a million people in the entire county. It's really small, like population-wise, and it's quite rugged and wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when you, when you can't afford Vancouver, Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. Why not? Um, I mean, at some point I'd like to get to Vancouver, but there's just no fucking point trying to move anywhere now because, like, just no one knows what the hell's going to happen. So, yeah. Um, yeah, until we have, like, kind of, you know, one of those, like, uh, you know, those, like, things you have at work when it's, like, it's been X amount of days since an accident. I think we should have one, like, for the globe. Like, yeah. it's been X amount of weeks since, you know, someone almost started a war or someone. Once it gets to, like, a reasonable amount, I think, okay, things have settled down a bit. I can probably go and try and move somewhere. That's a good point. Now... 
Uh, let's brighten things up. Let's talk about Neon. So Neon uh, was released onto the interwebs. Uh, Gabriel gave me a YouTube link. So I'm uh, speculating that, that is a single, if not a lead single, off of this EP, Parasite. So we could talk about Neon, or in general, we could just talk about this EP, Parasite. So maybe take us through this EP. Is, is, there, um, is there a theme? Is there something you wanted to do with it? Is it a concept EP? What is the Parasite? Take me through it. Yeah, so I mean, uh, like a lot of the stuff I do, like like with there's um, there's always a lot of wordplay in our stuff. So I deliberately changed the spelling of parasite because it was more about how things are viewed and uh, how your own perception of things can skew what's actually going on in front of you. Um, and that was kind of like uh, something that was a leftover feeling from the last album, but also something that I felt that was very relevant to what was going on with me at the moment. Um, so I think generally this EP, a lot of it is uh, quite cathartic in the sense of there's a lot of kind of brutal truths that I've kind of admitted to myself um, and admitted out loud for the first time, um, you know, addressing kind of ideas of uh, failure, and um expectations and it was it was kind of just these four songs that had these particular ideas but musically they don't really sit together and a lot of the other stuff we've done is very thematically sound wise very cohesive this was just four tracks that kind of just lived in the same space and um i kind of just i i didn't do anything by any rules this time around you know kind of building on the theme of what the EP was about, I was just like, screw it. I just want to make some songs and just do these songs. And I put them together and I'm like, there they are like, like it or piss off. I don't care. Like it was just, there it is. Um, and before there was like a strong feeling of, I want this to succeed. I want people to like this. I want it to be a certain way. And, um, this time around I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to make what I want to make. And, um, and it's weirdly seemed to resonate a lot with people. So um, I guess I did something right this time. I have lots of questions and lots of uh, sardonic comments. But one of my first questions, just to keep the interview rolling positively, is what took so long to get to the point where you are willing to just be an artist living in a public space where people can just see you wearing your heart on your sleeve and you're OK with that? Um, I think, I mean, any, I mean, I've never really kind of shied away from brutal truths on my, um, on my previous albums, like lyrically, they've always been quite sort of stark and quite out there, but it was always, I think the, the themes that I was dealing with were, this is something I've overcome. This is something I'm dealing with, but I'm going to, you know, kind of get through it. This is something that I'm kind of figuring out how to embrace. So even in the negative, there was always like a positive slant on this, on it, on the things that I was doing. And I was always thinking, well, hopefully people will, you know, attach themselves to that and maybe get something positive from that. This last EP though, this was more just about, it was just about failure. It was just like, I give up, I throw in the towel. I'm done. Don't care. Like, can't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's very little lyrically and thematically in that EP. There's very little hope. Um, it's, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, it's very dark in that respect. Like there's just, there's like, there's not a lot going on there. That's redemptive. Um, well, you know, uh, be and I think I had to get to that point because you, you spend, you know, 10 years doing music and you've always trying to sort of project the level of success of yourself and the others around you and publicly and everything else, because you want to build on that. And obviously you want to keep things positive, but you know, sometimes you kind of have to just go, Oh, do you know what? I'm just fucking tired. Like, mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, call it how you see it, yeah. which is where that term parasite came from. You know, I was, I was looking at things in the wrong way. Yeah. I, I was just quiet for a second so I could let the audience, if anybody is listening in, because statistically they're not anymore, but for anybody who is, thanks for hanging out. I agree with uh, you being here. Thanks for chipping in. Click subscribe or something. Um, but <laughs> maybe they tuned in because, I don't know, Charlie looks great. And he does. Um, I think, what was I going to say? I don't know. I think we've reached a point in the pandemic where just a lot of us are like, screw it. Um, you know, I think in the beginning when the pandemic was fun, Right about that space between like we're going to camp out and toilet paper was missing. There was that hope of like, hey, life might change for the positive. Like we might choose to do something different with our lives. But I think a lot of us just kept going. 
And then now it's reached a point where we're like, I'm burned out, man. And I'm burned out because blah, 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 blah. And having that real conversation with yourself where it's not just a theoretical conversation anymore of like, I don't really like blah, 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 but eh, this will pass. But almost two years later, it hasn't passed. And we now are looking at it probably going on for another year, maybe even two years because of certain individuals and their actions that unfortunately take up 30% of the goddamn population. <sighs> and... <Yeah. laughs> let's hope they're listening. Let's, ho- let's hope they're listening. And no, I don't respect your opinion. Go fuck yourself. Because uh, your opinion sucks and it's hurting people. Yeah, they do. Yeah. You're welcome to have your opinion if it's constructive and positive. But once it's hurting people and killing people... And children can't get operations done at hospitals because there's no more beds available. Your opinion needs to stop. But that's yeah. that's yeah. I mean, like just there's me a lot of dumb opinions out there. Like one of one of my friends is like got really into flat earth stuff recently, and I'm like, <laughs> God, God. But, I mean, you can't like, be Australian then because you don't exist. Yeah, yeah. I was like, cool, go nuts. But the, the thing is, yeah, it has no real life implications. You just people just think you're a dick at parties. That's literally it. Like, yeah. um, it doesn't affect anything. Whereas, yeah, when people are kind of having opinions about real world shit that actually makes a difference, then yeah, it's um, it's, Come- it's become a very kind of uh, charged environment in that respect. Yeah. Um, with a lot of things. Yeah, but I mean, even even myself you know, looking at things, it's just starting to get burned out from dragging on. And once that physical exhaustion starts taking place or that mental exhaustion or that soul exhaustion starts coming in place, you know, I just look at somebody like Amanda, who's just like with her yoga shirt on. And I'm like, can I take those pills? Like, what are you, what are you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know what the the burnout thing is definitely true. Cause I think if, if the pandemic hadn't have happened, maybe things would have gone differently. But I think because of the kind of like, I've just kind of had enough of that. Like, I think I started just reflecting on other parts of my life and just kind of getting rid of people and going, oh, actually, you suck. Go away. Like, I'm done with you. Yeah. And that's kind of how this EP felt, because after all the kind of time we'd spent going over stuff in the last year or 18 months and just kind of finally getting the album done last year and then kind of going, look, we've done this really cool thing. And then all the people in the industry uh, kind of just like, the, the important people, the people that make the decisions, just going like, eh. And I'm like, oh, do you know what? Fuck you. Like, you haven't made anything. Like, I'm going to stop pandering to you. Like, I'm going to stop making, like, presenting this in a way that I think that's what you want to see. I don't want to go on tour with your band anymore. You suck. Everything sucks. And I'm going to write an EP about that. And, um, <laughs> Because there's, there's just only so much positivity you can give when you just get nothing back. And after a while, you're like, oh, I'm just done. Like, I just don't care. Like, yeah. um, it just felt like a kind of weird, uh, I felt like I was going through like a divorce from like the industry, like a kind of this toxic relationship that was only, only ever going one way. And eventually I was like, you know what? I'm done with you guys. You, you all mm-hmm. suck. I have no interest in being part of your industry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and, I mean- uh, so yeah, that was kind of the reaction to, to that. But yeah. So far, like a lot of people have said, it's the best material we've put out, which is ironic. Um, so I mean, isn't hey, I, it I ironic? Like, don't it you think? The only reason I just your, I just saw one of your Alanis, fellow Canadians, yeah, Alanis Morissette, because she has a HBO special coming out that she does not endorse because she does not like the way it came out. So Alanis Morissette was on my mind, and you said it was ironic. So being Canadian, I have certain playlists stuck in my head, and Alanis is one of them. Strong, powerful woman. I was listening to her, speaking of the 90s, I was listening to her the other day, and I was floored. I was blown away. I was like, there is no auto-tune on this. This, There's no Pro Tools. This is all to tape. This is, wow. Yeah, no, no, she's she's she's, she's good. She's, she's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, she, and she went out with Ryan Reynolds for a long time, and I do like Ryan Reynolds. He's another good Canadian. So, um, Very good. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, something that I have found out from a few years now kind of dipping my toe, I guess you could say, in the music industry that surprised me that I know for commentators or people in the peanut gallery, you guys have that saying in England, the peanut gallery? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised sometimes how many expressions are still like poking around and, how yeah. many, you know, I'm like, what did you just say? Uh, but anyway, yeah, for people in the peanut gallery, it's like, and maybe there are some people who are able to sustain a 10 plus year career not being themselves. But I, if there's anything I've learned from chatting with people such as yourself or even bigger people is that 
for example, Chad Kroger is Chad Kroger. He's not putting on an act. That's who he is. And if there's anything I learned from, say, Devin Townsend, he had a similar moment that you had where he's just like, you know what? I'm never going to be James Hetfield. That's just not me. Mm. I'm going to be me, and I just have to be at peace with who I am. And if that's being a plumber, then guess what? Every day is going to be an ecstatic piece of heaven because that's who I am, and I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. And I guess it's kind of weird maybe that some of us are a James Hetfield, and we're just going to go on to be Metallica, and that's that's that. And then there's others of us who are just, we're going to be a janitor in a, at an elementary school. But, you know, that's, that's just what think, it is. I think... I think for me, the idea was, it was this kind of like, I could go and start a shitty metalcore band. I could go and just rip off, bring me the horizon and go and play big fucking shows to lots of fans. And, but like it would suck. And, um, I think the big difference to me was in this EP in parasite, I didn't even do a press release. I didn't even really warn anyone that was coming. I didn't send it to anybody. I didn't promote it. I put no marketing budget. I went, there it is. Listen to it or don't. I don't fucking care. I'm going to make another one now. And I didn't follow any of that stuff, like yeah. the, the way of doing it. You know, like the last, every other album we've done, you do the album, you do the press release, you do promotion stuff, you go on tour, you do all this, like you, you do all the things you're supposed to do. And I was like, I just can't, what's the point? Like it's, it's pointless anyway. So I was like, I'm not doing any of that shit. Like listen to it or don't. I just don't care. Yeah. Um, and um whatever i seem to capture on this last ep um i think there was a level of honesty or truth to it or something that seems to have resonated with the listeners more a lot more of like our fans have been like that's really like you've done something really special there mm -hmm. uh, and it was that's the first good. ep that i did by myself since 2012 because like cat and jono were not involved in this at all <laughs> um so yeah I'm just imagining this entire time just imagine you sitting at a desk candlelight and you just slam your fists and you start telling yourself things and like you know amanda comes out and yeah. are you okay she's wearing a yoga shirt <laughs> i just want to put on like a shirt that says tai chi and like she's doing yoga in the park and i'm doing tai chi in the park but like you know by looking at us if you can speak english what we're doing <laughs> or read english i guess you could say yeah that's but cool. yeah, I, I mean, um, I guess that was another, this idea of not caring was the actual production process. You know, Kat didn't play anything on this. Luke did a little bit of drums, but every song I was like, I've written that. I've done all, made all the decisions. No one's second guessing me. No one's taking anything away from it or adding to it. I just do it exactly how I want. And it was, it was the first release I've been nervous of because I was like, it's all on me. Like if this sucks, then I've got no one to go, well, it was definitely, you know, yeah. it was all on me. Well, Johnny and, uh, Chan, it was your guitar solo that just completely took everybody out of the picture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, but you know, what? I mean, I, I had the confidence to do it and I did it and it came out pretty good and I hadn't played uh, that much stuff before for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so it was fun. So, I mean, like we're already working, me and Luke are already working on the next Ventana album. Like, so, um, you know, it's just going to keep picking up more and more momentum at this point. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, if you need any guest guitar parts, I, uh, I have a Canadian made guitar out of Canadian wood. It's got maple and poplar in it. I got two of them. Wow. Yeah. Does, does Gabe prep you for that as well? Does he give you like mm -hmm. notes or, you know, kind of tell you, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. good right. that you've got this like mini me that like just does all your stuff for you. It's great. Like, I, I mean, he's, 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 he's really paying his rent there. Like he sure is. I love that guy. All right. So anybody who's still listening in, today we got caught up on life, which you got to witness. We chatted about Kung Fu momentarily. We chatted about moving to Cornwall. We chatted about playing from the heart. We chatted about the EP Parasite and how it's a play on words. In today's show notes, you can go to ventender.com down below, as well as click on the link for Neon. And the EP is available wherever you consume music. So please do. Charlie, that concludes my questions. Thank that you. concludes my answers. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the rock metal podcast today thank you and i will send you pictures later thank you